Now we're familiar with monodentate, bidentate, and multidentate ligands, it's time we started looking at the chelate effect. Now, this is something that kind of, I don't know, almost gets over-egged, if you know what I mean, okay? I think you can go into this in too much detail. The types of questions that get asked on it are pretty straightforward. Most of the time, it's explain what the chelate effect is, or why does this happen, and you have to explain what the chelate effect is. So, in this tutorial, we're just going to look at, in the simplest way, how do we explain what the chelate effect is and why does it occur when it comes to these ligand substitution or ligand exchange reactions? But what is it? Well, we find that bidentate and multidentate ligands readily substitute or exchange in place of monodentate ligands. So if you have, let's say, a hexa aqua iron and you put a bidentate ligand near it, they're going to swap out, okay? So it prefers to have or be with bidentate or multidentate ligands. This creates a more stable complex. We've got to talk about stability here. So this is what's known as the chelate effect, where bidentate and multidentate ligands exchange in place of monodentate ones because it creates a more stable complex. So that's the fact, that is the chelate effect. So of course, what we need to do is explain it. So let me break it down into two, hopefully simple and straightforward parts in the explanation. Well, our first part of an explanation links to entropy or you know what is all about entropy. So the first thing here, why does it happen? Well, where there is an increase in entropy when it does happen. Now, entropy, don't forget, is a measure of disorder. When you get increase in entropy, you get an increase in number of molecules or more gases or more liquids from solids or something like that. So we do get an increase in entropy when this exchange occurs. And of course, things and reactions tend towards entropy, tend towards disorder. Let's look at an example of, you know, this ligand exchange. So if we start with a hexa aqua copper two plus, so Cu H2O6, two plus aqueous, plus an EDTA molecule. That's an example, of course, of one of our multidentate ligands. Only one of those multidentate ligands is needed to take up all six positions in terms of coordinate bonds around that copper. So what we get is a complete ligand exchange. All six of those water molecules are removed and swapped out for one EDTA molecule. And of course, those six water molecules have been evicted. They're just floating around on their own now, okay? So we do have an increase in entropy. We can put it like this. In terms of our reactants, we've only got two moles of them, okay? One mole of each. So we've only got two moles of reactants there against relatively seven moles of products because we've got one new complex Cu EDTA2- and six moles of water. So we've increased the number of moles from reactants to products. So that's why we have an increase in entropy. So what we can say is for this reaction that delta S, we don't know numbers, but we know that it's positive because we're increasing entropy. And what we mustn't forget to say once explaining this is that reactions do tend towards an entropy increase. We know from looking in the entropy topic that we've already done, or hopefully you've already done, then reactions tend towards entropy and tend towards an increase in entropy. So delta S is positive. That's the first reason for this readily happening substitution reaction okay so entropy is the first part of the explanation the second really important part here is enthalpy change okay because if you think back to Gibbs free energy okay then there's lots of things going on to make you know to describe or explain why a reaction is feasible or not enthalpy change here or delta H is is negligible. Now, what I mean by that, it's pretty much about zero. There's hardly any enthalpy change that goes on when this ligand substitution reaction happens, when you're swapping out six ligands for six ligands. What I mean here is that if we have six coordinate bonds, like we did around our copper at the top there with six water molecules, we need to break all of those coordinate bonds. Fine, we need to put energy in to do that. But then six coordinate bonds are forming from the EDTA. So on balance, okay, we need to put energy in to break those six coordinate bonds, but then energy is released when six new ones are formed anyway. So really on the whole, the enthalpy change, it's basically zero. So therefore, delta H 
is approximately zero. Okay, so this is really, really important. You're not going to get much of an enthalpy change. You might get some value because you know what? The bond enthalpy of a water molecule coordinately bonds to the copper is going to be slightly different to maybe one of the nitrogens in the EDTA bonding to the copper. So you're not bonding exactly the same thing. So delta H isn't going to be exactly zero. But you know what? The overall change, it's neither here nor there. So it's a very, very small number. OK, so that's why we say it's negligible and not actually zero. So what we've got here are two parts to the explanation. First part, we get an increase in entropy. So that's why it tends to happen. All right. So delta S is positive because things tend towards entropy. The second thing to note here, and very importantly, you can't have, can't complete this explanation without this bit. And that's that there's a negligible change in enthalpy. So delta H is neither here nor there. So we need to bring these together. Can we think of an equation maybe that brings these two things together? And I've already mentioned it. And of course, that is Gibbs free energy. And that's your parting shot. That's your drop the mic statement when explaining the chelate effect. Overall, what we've got is the change in Gibbs free energy equals delta H minus T delta S. Now, of course, if we want this reaction to be feasible, which of course it is feasible, delta G has got to be below zero. Now, delta G tends to be below zero for all of these exchanges, you know, from a bidentate and multidentate ligand changing or swapping out for those individual monodentate ones. So the reason here and a reminder, well, if delta H is really, really small, OK, so it's about zero. It's neither here nor there. It might be slightly positive overall. It might be slightly negative overall. But generally speaking, it's going to be a really small number. Well, if you get that really small number and you're taking away temperature, which is always going to be a positive value because it's in Kelvin. OK, and our delta S, as we've already shown, is always positive when you're swapping a bidentate or multidentate ligand for six individual monodentate ones, then it's always going to be negative. Let's say, I don't know, delta H is even plus 10. OK, well, if you take away temperature times the increase in entropy, it's going to be a negative number. So you know what, 99.9999 times out of 10, this is going to be a negative value for delta G. So delta G, we can safely say, will always be negative due to the fact we've got a very small delta H and the fact that T delta S is always going to be a positive number. So you're taking away a positive number from, you know, what's basically zero. OK, so that's always positive for this type of ligand exchange, as I said in one, because you're always going to get an increase in entropy. Final statement. This final statement states that the exchange always happens readily as it's feasible at any temperature. OK, so even if you've got, you know, a really, really low temperature in terms of Kelvin, it doesn't matter. You're dealing with such a small delta H, your overall answer is going to be negative in terms of delta G. Overall, then. What do we need to understand with the chelate effect? Well, there's a number of different questions they can ask. They can ask you maybe, you know, what two things do we need to consider when explaining the chelate effect? Well, that's entropy change and enthalpy change. You know, or they may ask you for six marks, the whole hog, you know, explain why this reaction happens readily when EDTA displaces or, you know, substitutes in for these water molecules. Hell, it could be even EDTA for, a, you know, three bidentate ligands. So we always tend towards entropy and we always get an increase in entropy when exchanging multidentate for bidentate or mono and bidentate for mono because, you know, we're increasing entropy and enthalpy change is negligible. OK, so that is your chelate effect in a nutshell.